Rub up your engines. Today I'm going to answer Joey B. Ball's question. Why are luxury cars unreliable these days? Luxury cars are a status symbol. And as such, what do they do with a status symbol? They put every fancy thing they possibly can and often the newest technology. To give you one of numerous examples, the 98 to 2000 Cadillac Seville, they came with water-cooled alternators. Think about it. An alternator's charging your car with electricity, yet it has the cooling of the cooling system going inside to cool it down so it doesn't overheat. Now when they did that as a mechanic myself, I thought, what a stupid idea. Combined your charging system of electricity with the coolant. Those things are going to leak and short out. Guess what happened? They all leaked and shorted out and they only used it from 98 to 2000. Then they gave up with that idea. But if you bought one of those cars, tough luck on you. And since they are luxury cars, hey, they're expected to ride like a dream. Now they put some insane technology into modern cars. You take some of these Mercedes. They have shock absorber airbag assemblies, one on each corner, two in the front, two in the back. And they run off all kinds of things. Hydraulic pressure, electrical computer signals, and they have a little airbag built into them that runs off an air compressor. We're talking about high tech. And guess what? High tech stuff wears out. Yes, they ride like a dream. There's no arguing that. But they break down and break down they too. They cost a fortune, not something a normal person is going to want to have. And if you're talking about a German luxury car like a Mercedes, they have very tight tolerances. I remember when I was a young mechanic, my grandfather said to me, this is stupid. Look at this German car. He said, they have this thing machined so perfectly that it fits right on without a gasket, but it costs a fortune to machine them. Compared that to an American car that, hey, they would just put a gasket there. It would be just made in a factory stamped out and then a gasket's put on it and it's bolted on so it doesn't leak instead of making really fine tolerance. The closer the finer the tolerance the more maintenance you need. To give you an example from the military world in Vietnam the M16 was the average guy's rifle. A highly designed machine had pretty tight tolerances where the Vietnamese were using the Kalashnikovs which not only was an old design it came from World War II but it had very wide tolerances. So if you threw one in the mud or buried it in the ground and got it out later, the thing would still fire perfectly fine because it wasn't that high tech. And the tolerances being that wide, things being off a little in here, it still worked perfectly fine. So if we go back to the car world and I see this all the time, let's say you got a few years old luxury car. Somebody buys it. Luxury cars often have very low resale values. So somebody says, oh, I'll get this used Mercedes really cheap. Now you might get it really cheap, but when people do that, then often they don't spend the money to maintain the vehicle. And if you don't maintain a luxury vehicle, guess what? It'll fall apart and people will say, boy, that's unreliable. That thing was always breaking down. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule. This is a 17 year old Lexus. I do nothing practically except change the oil in the thing. And it doesn't have those problems. But then again, that's Toyota. That's a completely different ball game. Unless you go into the realm of a Lexus hybrid luxury car. Because as they age, hybrid cars can get very expensive to repair. Batteries can cost thousands and thousands of dollars. And the parts on them cost a ton. And being electric part of the time with over 200 volts. Anybody who's going to work on that is going to charge a lot of money because they need a lot of specialty tools and a lot of knowledge and they know the average guy can't work on that kind of voltage. They could kill themselves. Now recently there's even more reasons that luxury cars can be unreliable and that's because being a luxury car it's got the snob appeal and if you're going to be a snob you can't be driving around in an old luxury car. So you have to buy a new luxury car. And knowing that, they can put a lot of planned obsolescence into a luxury car. They make sure things start to break when they get a few years old. You'll go buy another one. You're going to do it anyways if you're trying to impress people by the newer car you're driving. But they kind of push you along with planned obsolescence. Now the average person with a luxury car does think that way. As an example, I got a customer on the opposite end of the spectrum. He bought a Mercedes 
S600. And that thing was 120 grand when it was new. He got it when it was seven years old for $10,000. And yes, the electronics are breaking down. Some of the windows don't roll up and down anymore. He doesn't care because he's using it just to drive around in. But he's the rarity. Most people don't want to be driving a luxury car where half of the stuff on it doesn't work anymore. And this might sound a little bit crazy, but it's true for a lot of people. I remember when I was a young mechanic, we had a customer, he'd buy a new Cadillac every two years, and he did zero maintenance on the car. He didn't even change the oil in the thing. I'll never forget talking to him one time. He said, when my cigarette ashtrays get filled up with ashes, ah, I'll just go buy another car. He was joking, but to some extent he wasn't joking. <laughs> now it's not that they can't make reliable luxury cars like the Lexus and my wife drives. It's totally possible to do, but it's against a lot of their own business interests, especially in American cars, to make a luxury car that lasts a long time and doesn't break down because they want to keep selling you new ones every few years. And since most people with luxury cars, hey, they want a fast car, it's a luxury car got to be fast. So modern cars, they're throwing in GDI fuel injection. They're throwing in sometimes dual, two turbochargers on an engine. Yes, they go fast, but when you put all that added strain on an engine, guess what? It's going to wear out fast. And in the case of some luxury cars these days, they tell you to use premium gas, which costs a whole bunch more. I've seen a lot of people with luxury cars, they'll just put regular gas and they'll say, oh look, it runs fine to me. Now, it does run fine to some extent, but you're always going to lose some power that way. And unless it's an ultra modern one with computer controls that can compensate for the different octane of the gas, Eventually, the engine will carbon up from not running perfectly, and then uh, it won't be as reliable. Now, it is kind of strange how times have changed with luxury cars being unreliable, because when I was a young mechanic in the 60s, hey, a Cadillac, everybody's singing about great luxury Cadillacs, those things actually were extremely reliable. But of course, times have changed now. Cadillacs, hey, they made the list of the most unreliable cars this year. And if anybody ever owned a Rolls Royce from the 1980s. Those things just fell apart as you were driving down the road. Well, now, I mean, BMW owns them and their V12 BMW engines. They're completely different than they used to be. But just because you're paying all this money doesn't mean you're going to get a reliable vehicle these days. And even something as simple as tires and wheels on a luxury car. Some of the modern ones that come with really fancy low profile tires and expensive rims that you hit potholes, they'll bend, they'll break, the car will get out of alignment, suspension parts will break down. Things that, if they didn't have these crazy designs, wouldn't be happening in the first place. I've even had personal customers who had those low profile tires and rims taken off of their luxury car and put on normal tires, and they were happy with it. And the same goes true with people that have luxury cars with those fancy suspension systems. Hey. If the struts cost $1,500 a piece, nowadays you can get a kit for maybe 800 bucks that does all four and you turn it back into a normal suspension system instead of one that's run by computers. But really, who wants to get involved in that nonsense in the first place? My advice is don't buy one of those cars to begin with. So now you know why luxury cars these days, hey, they can become very unreliable over a short period of time. So I'm still driving my 94 Celica. <laughs> and since this is the Thursday segment where I answer a viewer's question, place your own question on the YouTube comments below, and I'll pick the best ones to make a single video to answer your questions. And where else can you find a guy with 50 years experience of fixing cars to answer your own question with a video? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.